You know, it's crazy. I grew up on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and yet I've never read an actual Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic book. And some years ago, to my surprise, I didn't know it started as a comic book. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has a very um, interesting history. If you grew up watching cartoons in the 80s and 90s like myself, then you will be very familiar with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But what you might not know if you're not really familiar with the story is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the comic book, which was first, was actually kind of dark. It wasn't really anything like the cartoon, which if you go to read even some of the comics now, it will surprise you because it takes on a completely different tone from the cartoon. So I bought this uh, comic book. I bought it digitally first because I didn't know how I was going to like it. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is now under IDW Comics. It was originally under Mirage Comics and even spent some time under the Image Comics banner. Mirage Comics was started by the two creators of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who was Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And a lot of this I didn't know, honestly. Anyway, so I bought this book, The Last Ronin, The Lost Years. Uh, this is book number one of, I guess, The Lost Years is the series. Like I said, I've never read it. And I guess The Last Ronin has been something that's been going on for a while. When a comic begins, you see an older Rachel O'Neill with what I believe is her daughter. And they're raising four new turtles. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have died in battle and the last one surviving is Michelangelo. And then it kind of goes off to Michelangelo's story. He's feeling bad for himself. He wants to die. He goes up on his mountain. He's found by some guys that want to kill him. He takes the beating. He wants to die. And then he hears a voice who is Master Splinter. He gets up, beats the dudes down. Of course, I'm giving you the cliff notes. The book is good, though. The, um, I was very surprised at how much I actually enjoyed this book. It, it wasn't so because I'm not used to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a comic book because I grew up on the cartoon. I wasn't reading comic books at that time. I didn't start reading comic books until... I want to say it was somewhere around 1992. I think 1992, somewhere around there is where I started reading comic books. But this comic book reads different than the cartoon. So if you're used to the cartoon and kind of the quirkiness and the comedic nature of the cartoon, the comic book doesn't really read like that nor was it ever intended to read like that. I was reading an article earlier. I will post the link to the article in the notes. But in the article, they interviewed the creators of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And one of the creators, I believe it was Eastman, on one of his blogs some years ago, voiced his issues with the way the cartoon turned out. I guess he didn't like the fact that the cartoon was so lighthearted, but the toy maker, let me see. I'm trying to find it in the article. I believe it was not Mattel. What is that toy maker? It was Playmates, I think was the toy maker at the time. Wanted to put out a, they, they wanted to put out some action figures and they wanted to release a cartoon to go along with the action figures but they didn't want the show to be so, I guess, adult oriented because I guess in the original comics, the turtles were definitely like cutting enemies up and getting to the business. And the toy maker was like, ah, not so much. We want to appeal to a younger audience. Yo, the interesting thing about about the story 
of Eastman and Laird who created the comic, uh, the turtles is that they were actually broke when they created this. And it's funny how back then there's so many stories of creators of different things, comic books and other things that were broke, had an idea and just went for it. And stories like that are actually rather inspiring because you see how these dudes just gambled. They said, you know what? Let's go for it. And it actually panned out for them. I didn't, and I didn't realize how successful the comic book was. The comic book was actually extremely successful. So anyway, getting back to this book, The Last Ronin, what, what made me want to start reading Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic books is the Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover. As you know, I am a Batman fan. He is my favorite hero. And I, I walked into the, a comic book store uh, that I frequent about, I want to say maybe two years ago. Now, two or three years ago, maybe maybe longer. Now, by this point, the Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles run had already been going and I believe it was already wrapped up. So they had um, all of the books um, compiled and they had a hardcover uh, comic book with, you know, all of the books in this series in that hardcover. So I said, you know what? I'm going to think about getting that. I kept looking at the cover. I kept coming into the comic book store and I would see it. And then one day I said to myself, okay, I'm going to buy it. And lo and behold, it wasn't there. They were sold out. And I didn't see that book in the comic book store again. And I kicked myself because I thought I should have bought it. I should have bought it when I had the opportunity. But I didn't realize that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles actually had really good stories. And the story in this last Ronin, yo, is actually, I'm not going to lie, is actually really decent. I was very shocked because I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting to read and be like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, I expected it to be similar to the cartoon. Because in my mind, I always thought, the, the comic books came after the cartoons and I was mistaken. It was a comic book first in the early 80s, did very well, got picked up by a toy maker. They made it into a cartoon and they changed some things. They made it more lighthearted and they wanted to cater to a younger audience. One of the things I was surprised is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles love for pizza wasn't in the comic books. That was something added in the cartoon. Also, in the comic books, they all wore red masks. And the only way you could tell them apart was their unique weapons. And I guess the toy maker and um, uh, the, the producers of the cartoon didn't want the weapons to be emphasized. So they went with a different color mask and belts and and bands and you know they had the the initials on the belt so they were focusing on other things so i can definitely see how eastman had some problems with this because it was drastically different from the comic book that him and laird created but anyway if you're a comic book fan i think last ronin lost years is a book worth reading. I think it's worth checking out. Again, I'm not going to tell you it was the greatest and I'm not going to tell you you're going to love the book and it's going to blow your mind, but it's a decent read if you like comic books.